Howdy y'all, my name is Will Watson and I'm going to be doing the March 2021 topic analysis video for Champion Briefs. Um, the topic this month is about Space Force, specifically resolved on balance the benefits of creating the United States Space Force outweigh the harms. And I think this is a really interesting topic for a couple of reasons. Today, I really do want to stress more about the meta-analysis rather than the arguments themselves, because I think a lot of teams are going to be able to come up with general weaponizing space good versus bad arguments. I don't think a lot of teams are going to be coming up with the specific arguments needed to handle this topic. So let's begin with a little bit of history. Most of you already know this, but the idea of weaponizing space is nothing new. Um, back when, under the Reagan administration, there was talk of the Star Wars program, which would have put lasers into space to destroy nuclear weapons. It's an interesting debate. Uh, back in, I think, 2010, 2011-ish, uh, the policy debate community also discussed the idea of space expansion policies. So if you have any coaches that debated back in that era, you can probably find some good back files here. So there is a history behind this topic. This, the idea of creating military branch for space isn't anything new. It's been discussed previous, but under the Trump administration, as you know by now, we did officially have the creation of the Space Force. Let's break down some of the wording in the topic. First, the, top, uh, the topic writers decided to do resolved on balance. This is an interesting choice for them to do this, given the fact that resolved actually means firmly determined to do something. Uh, from Oxford languages. The way it's written is almost as if they put should in the topic. Um, as most of you know, should implies a policy action. Uh, the United States federal government should do X, Y, Z, where in that case, it's really easy to do a comparison between two worlds versus the benefits outweighing the harms in which you're evaluating it based on a statement of fact rather than a statement of policy. But then it does say, on balance. So teams can take this in a couple of different routes depending on what they want to do with definitions. Here's my advice though, and this brings us into the meta part. Treat the pro as the status quo and treat the con as a new world. Here's what I mean by that. In 9 out of 10 debates, the pro is a new world. Let's say the topic was the United States federal government should denuclearize. The new world would be the pro world, in which the pro goes ahead and eliminates all nuclear weapons, while the con world is the status quo, where nothing is being done. This topic is different. We already have the creation of a space force, where you can see that this has been done. It was done last year. So what I would advise teams to do is treat the pro as what's happening right now. All evidence that points to the status quo being good with the creation of the Space Force is probably going to be pro-evidence. All evidence that points to the status quo being bad with the creation of the Space Force is con-evidence. The topic is not advocating for the creation of a second Space Force. The topic is just asking the question of whether or not when we created the Space Force, is it good or bad? Um, that's where you can really pull in some of the benefits outweighing the harms part but you still get to do your two-world analysis. Um, a lot of your varsity may have debated a similar topic uh, where it was the missile defense in South Korea topic. Um, that topic had already happened where we had already put a missile system in, or a missile defense system in South Korea right after the topic was announced, but we still had to go and debate it. The way you do that is you go ahead and say, hey, the Space Force has been created here's what's good about it, or here's what's bad about it. It really should bring the debate out of the theoretical. Um, and with this, I want to go kind of to the second part of the meta of the creation aspect. The topic isn't asking, is the Space Force good or bad? It's asking if the creation of the Space Force is good or bad. And there's a lot of different ways teams could interpret this. You can easily go and say, well, the creation of the Space Force leads to the Space Force. Let's evaluate if the Space Force is good or bad. And that's a fine way to interpret it. That's how I imagine the majority of teams are going to go ahead and treat this topic. There's another way you could interpret it, where you go ahead and say, everything after the creation of the Space Force is non-topical. We're not arguing if the Space Force itself is good or bad. We're arguing about the creation of the Space Force and whether that's good or bad. 
This would give the con a lot of leeway to talk about perception arguments, where, and we'll get onto this in a minute, but if it's only the creation that we're talking about, you can exclude large swaths of the debate and really claim a lot of ground for yourself and get your final focus strategy in early on in the round. Um, and finally, with the argumentation. So there's going to be a lot of shared arguments on this topic. And that's because the Space Force revolves around satellites, pun intended. Um, what I mean by that is satellites control literally every single thing we do. If you drive a car and use a GPS, chances are you're using a satellite. Uh, for those of you who aren't driving yet, maybe you have a bank account card um, and you go to an ATM, you're using a satellite to do that. Or maybe you place a call, you may be using a satellite to do that. Um, there's a lot of different ways we use satellites in our everyday lives. One of Space Force's top goals is to get satellites in orbit and then protect them whenever they are in orbit. There's a lot of different harms to a satellite, and we can talk about those in a minute, but really keep satellites in mind. Um, I, I will be very surprised if I hear a, a case, pro or con, on this topic that doesn't mention satellites. So do with that as you wish. You can either go ahead and just go with the flow and have a, we are protecting satellites, here's three reasons why, and here's five impacts stemming off of satellites. Or you can be the one team to not discuss satellites, figure out a way to turn the impact of satellites, and then run with the ball there. This topic, because of all of its shared argumentation, is going to come down to two things. It's going to come down to teams that can weigh well and teams that can give warrants. Warrants are the because of your arguments. If you are not explaining why exactly something happens, you are losing the round. For example, you can't just stand up and say the Space Force aggravates China, which leads to a war. You need to get a lot more specific than that. You can say the Space Force aggravates China because China views it as us weaponizing spaces, space, causing Xi Jinping to put their own Chinese force in outer space, leading to us declaring war on China for invading space. I doubt the narrative would ever play exactly like that, but you get the picture. Let's go to the pro side. So the order is gonna be pro, con, critical. I figure I'll throw in some critical stuff for you debaters out there who just love making judges head hurt. So the pro will have two different types of args, and so will the con. They're gonna have args about general space weaponization. These are the args you're pulling from your back files uh, or your team's back files. But the good teams are gonna go beyond that, and they're gonna have Space Force specific argumentation because the Space Force really isn't focused on weaponizing space. Don't get me wrong, they've already said, there have been reports that about 16,000 soldiers are being trained for space warfare. And that does sound like weaponizing space, but whenever you start getting into the numbers of how many soldiers we've used for other things, it really does come down to a very small amount of soldiers who are gonna be going in our space. The Space Force's main objective is protecting our satellites and protecting us with cyber operations that relate to outer space. And I think that teams that can stay on track with those two areas will do well. But let's talk about some pro arguments that go ahead and fit into just general space weaponization. Uh, first is deterrence. We go ahead and we have it where the Guardians can fight in outer space, less people are going to attack us in outer space. That's general deterrence theory of warfare. And it's worked pretty well. Mutually assured destruction prevented us from shooting nukes at the Soviets and the Soviets from shooting nukes at us. So there is a little bit of empirics that can go behind this argument, where you can say that if we are the first ones to weaponize space, even if China weaponizes space, we're not going to shoot at China, China's not going to shoot at us. But you got to remember that satellite conflicts, and by satellites I mean satellite states, do still exist, where because we are trying to contain communism, we went to war in a lot of different places. If we're trying to do containment of the Chinese in outer space, what will all of those wars look like? Now, which brings me to the second argument. The pro could argue that war in space is inevitable, that we will be fighting in outer space whether or not we want to. Therefore, it is imperative that we win a war in outer space, which is why the Space Force is needed. The advantage of using that argument lied is that if you can prove the first tenet, that war in space is inevitable, that takes out a lot of the cons offense. Because if the con stands up and says it costs too much, 
you outweigh that by saying, well, the war is going to drain our funds anyway. If the Khan says, oh, you provoke China, you say war is inevitable, your impact is non-unique, it's better that we go ahead and win a war with China, and only the pro can do that. And so you're able to claim a lot of ground with that argument. Then let's go on to the third argument, which is the economy. So the economy is an interesting area here because there's two different ways for the pro to pursue it. First, you can say that creating the Space Force itself leads to an economic boom. And there's a couple ways to argue it. First is the construction aspect. Uh, Claire's Jobs in 2020 said that the construction behind the Space Force will provide about $1 billion worth of uh, construction funds. So you can say it's an infrastructure project and you can say that this is good. It will also likely open up jobs in the STEM field because people are going to go to the Space Force areas. Colleges are likely to be built to supply the Space Force with personnel. And at that point, you have a lot of job creation, which can be a really good thing. Um, there's another way, though, to argue the economy. And that comes from the Hill in 2019, who finds that we are going to be doing commerce in outer space. There's a lot of rare earth minerals or, rim, or REMs in outer space. REMs are critical to go ahead and let us operate things like technology, like weapons, green technology. All of that fun stuff is powered by rare earth minerals. At that point, there's a strong rationale for saying, hey, we need to get into outer space to protect those rare earth minerals. And there are some cards out there in the champion brief, uh, which go ahead and point to the fact that we do need to get into outer space to protect all of our commercial interests there. There are other ways to argue that though, where you say that, hey, this expands capitalistic adventures in a new environment. Um, the, uh, the Europeans came to America for commercial interest and they spread a lot of diseases and did a lot of bad when they came over here for commercial interest. So there are ways to talk about space and uh, space colonialism. We'll get to that in a minute, though. Um, the other argument that I think would be interesting to hear on the pro is that we need to get back to space, that we've been out of space for too long, that as a result, we've fallen behind. We really need to get out of space, or we need, really need to get back into space. Uh, the final argument here looks specifically at creation of the Space Force, because a lot of the stuff I've been talking about, other people do. There's about six, there were about 60 different agencies that did space-related things. That includes NASA, the Air Force, the NRO. There's a lot of different people here. But by creating the Space Force, you go ahead and consolidate resources. You go ahead and say, hey, this is the one person in charge of space. And with that, you're able to go ahead and wrangle a lot of people. And this sounds like bureaucratic work, but it's really effective in saying, hey, you do this area, Air Force, you focus on this area and leave it to the Space Force to go ahead and protect satellites. So it's one less thing for the Air Force to worry about, which you can argue improves our military readiness. You could say that, hey, by adding Space Force to the Joint Chiefs, now the president is being briefed on the condition of space and not on the condition of our air operations versus our space operations. It'd be an interesting argument to see play out and that and the economic argument are one of the few that I think are really specific to the Space Force. Where, remember, the advantages of this argument is it's really hard to say no to. There has been a Joint Chief added to the table. So at that point, you win the probability calculus whenever you start doing weighing, so you're going to be able to claim a lot of ground quickly. Let's move on to the con. The con could easily say that the Air Force does it better. And with that, there's a lot of different ways to play it out. You could say that the Space Force is too new, it's ineffective, and at this critical time, we cannot have a new organization trying to form up. That ultimately, it diverts too many resources away from the Air Force whenever we don't have time to do that. Farley of the Cato Institution writes a lot about this, saying that the Space Force is too, it's too new. It's too much at its inception and should not have been created to begin with. The other argument you can say, and this really goes back to the idea of just general space weaponization, is it is provocative. China and Russia get mad at us for weaponizing space, and they go ahead and weaponize space more. I'll remind teams that we aren't really weaponizing space. The, the Space Force's main goal is, yes, protection of satellites, but 
satellites are endangered by a lot of other things that aren't China and Russia. For example, there's a lot of debris in outer space. One of Space Force's top goals is clearing debris from outer space. The next idea goes with the provocation, which is an arms race. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of evidence for if arms races are good or bad. I'm begging you, don't get into an arms race evidence clash in round. Judges roll their eyes at that because we've all been there. Instead of just arguing the Space Force creates an arms race, get specific with it. Say that by creating an arms race, you improve the military industrial complex, which encourages us to get into wars to make a profit. That argument has a much more tangible impact with warranting that just saying arms races lead to war 20 times during the round. The final argument I want to talk about for the con is the cost aspect. Space Force costs money. It diverts money away from the Air Force. You can go ahead and say that that's a bad thing, that, that, that we're ballooning of the deficit, that this is a really problematic expenditure, yada, yada, yada. So with this, you're kind of seeing the divide here. Where the con, I would say, has a little bit less ground than the pro. And the con is going to have to get clever. But I think good con teams can turn most of the pro impacts. Whenever they talk about econ, I would talk about the military-industrial complex and say that's where the money goes. It doesn't exactly trickle down. Whenever they talk about deterrence, you get to say arms races. Whenever they say free up the Air Force, you say that no, it doesn't exactly free up the Air Force. Instead, it just makes the whole situation worse. So there's a lot of ways to turn the pro where I would really like to see a second speaking con team stand up, turn the pro's case and sit down, not read a case of their own. With judges who have experienced policy in Lincoln Douglas debate, that's a perfectly fine strategy. If you can just say no to everything the pro says yes to, the con wins on what's called presumption. Now in front of a lay judge, I wouldn't recommend that strategy, but you do you. Let's cr quickly talk about critical arguments. Critical arguments here include imperialism and colonialism. They are two different things, but with colonialism, you can say that if we colonize other planets, there's a chance that if they have other life on them, we could spread all of our diseases to them, or they could spread it to us. It's a little bit far-fetched, I know, but the literature is out there. The other idea is capitalism, where if the pro reads the econ scenario that we talked about, or you just read the econ scenario for them, and then you say capitalism bad, military industrial complex bad, uh, perpetuates inequalities, it's the root cause of all evil, there's literature that says just that, you can get a lot of ground, um, especially with a more flow judge. There's other arguments that you could read just about that the military is inherently a dangerous structure. Um, you can say that this is really provocative um, from a critical lens, and you can talk about that that way. So in conclusion, the pro is the status quo. The con is a new world. Treating the topic as such makes it a lot easier for you. There is also less room to argue space weaponization than most people think. Instead, talk about satellites. Talk a lot about satellites, and you should be fine. Weigh and give warrants. Please, 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 please weigh your arguments and give warrants. Really, have fun. Remember, if you've been watching this video for the 18 minutes or so, you're probably pretty invested in debate. Remember that at the end of the day, we're doing this because we like doing this. So have fun with it. Anyway, have a great one. Take care.